Good morning, my fellow yoga travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too, as we continue to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, live the life we love. Don't forget to loaf and lubricate. All right, so Wednesday's my bad joke day. I usually try to make fun of my, in my own tradition so people can be a little less sensitive about making fun of yourself. Uh, easier to do it than making fun of other people. Sometimes that'll get you in trouble. But here we go. This older man, maybe 90 years old, decides that one day he wants to go to the sperm bank and give him some. And when he gets there, they say, you know, I don't know. You're kind of like old. He says, listen, you ask my wife. She'll tell you how potent they are. So, all right, all right, fine. So they give him a jar, and they say, would you like a magazine? He says, I don't need any magazine. Goes into the bathroom. He's in there for a while. And then they hear from the outside, they go, oh, uh, oh, oh, uh, uh. Are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm having trouble getting the, the top of the jar off. All right. So as you know, I like to do things that deal with the power of affirmation. How does that bring joy into your life? Usually something about yoga, sometimes from my teacher, sometimes something in general. And then some kind of philosoph philosopher or somebody, psychologist, who's made an inroad into making sense for me. So today, of course, it's Ken Wilber, is what I'm talking about, the Einstein of consciousness, look him up, and BKSAN. So first, in terms of uh, understanding affirmation and the part that it plays in your life, the first thing is give thought to the clarity of your vision. Hmm? What do you want? Most people don't define what they want, remember, because once you set out the parameters for success, you've also set out the parameters for how you can fail. But you have to give the clarity to a picture in your mind, a vision in your mind that satisfies you, that pleases you. Don't pick something that doesn't make you feel good. You have to see the value in it, otherwise why would you work towards it or why would you build towards it? So I know it seems so simple, but so many people don't do it. Now, once you understand that gratitude it's a word that's bandied about a lot, but we're simply paying attention to all the things you're grateful for and intensifying that feeling of gratitude in the moment that gives rise to one way that you can learn to sustain happiness. And you can strengthen the happiness circuits in your brain. This is neuroscience. Or as I like to say in my little quippy way, most people normally are Velcro for negativity and Teflon for positivity. Why people are willing to not live, give a limit to how much pain they are, have, but they give a limit to how much joy they have. You have to learn to switch that around where you become Velcro for positivity and Teflon for negativity. So the good stuff sticks and the stuff that's not so good bounces off you like an arrow on a bat. Now, I never say that yoga is the only way. I like to repeat this again and again, but it is a discipline and anything that you discipline yourself for, if you work towards it, you're going to get better. Aggressive refinement over time. Look at any athlete, for instance, any musician, anybody who has a craft where they have to discipline themselves over and over again, and then look at the skill level they develop by dint of their concentration, their focus, their practice. And as the Dalai Lama says, what's the biggest part of spirituality? Routine. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it again, or as I like to say, hit the mat. Because as soon as one goal is attained, another one will come into view. Like climbing a mountaintop, and you get to the top, but you don't realize the other peaks were being occulted from view by the mountain you're climbing. So you're always setting new goals, or as the old statement says, your reach should exceed your grasp, otherwise what's a heaven for? But you want to do it with awareness. You don't want to make it mechanical, so it becomes dull, boring, the wrong kind of habit forming. So that means vigilance has to be unceasing, Otherwise, you won't be able to combat the various backsliding shortcomings, moods, weakness, pessimism that comes in the way of learning in general, and then is reflected sometimes in the world around you, which then doesn't support you, and then you got to take the flight of the alone to the alone. All right, last thing I want to share for you today is um, <clears throat> the radical truth, the fact of existence, the condition out of which all conditions come, as far as I'm concerned, the old teachings. We're at the terminal moraine of mythology. They're antiquated, outdated, anachronistic, 
simply wrong. And of course, I don't want to do what they call presentism, judging how they were then by how we are now. But we can look at a lot of things that they didn't know about reality. And so I don't believe that the golden age was in the past. Looking at what I understand is evolution, time developmental, moving one way into the future. Eden lies ahead, not in the past. So the only way we can judge any of those old teachings is they were appropriate for their time. Is it adequate? Is that teaching adequate for our time? Or do we have to find a new appropriateness, a different context in which the radical truth of today can exist? And of course, for me, it means looking ahead toward the planetary vision. And so I hope you take that in and do your part to be a goodwill ambassador. All right, in about an hour, we got the next Good Vibrations class, you still have time to go to GabrielHalpern.com and sign up. If not, you missed the class, you'll always get the recording. All right? Have a great day, and we'll see you soon. Peace.